My name is Andrew Archer, the artist behind Edo Ball. Born in New Zealand and now living in Melbourne, Australia. So the scope of work uh, I work on ranges from anything from sports to music, anything really which, which has a good energy and vibe about it. More recently in sports with basketball players within the NBA, which is, is definitely a dream of mine. Kevin Garnett was always my guy. He's the first basketball player that, that I ever saw and, and really admired his game, but it wasn't really his game, like his skill set. It was just his intensity and his work ethic was unmatched. And I remember at the time thinking, you know, what if you applied this to, to your career, to creativity? I started playing basketball late, really late. I was 17. Uh, the only reason I really played was because we used to hang out at this this small park in New Zealand and my friends used to play street ball. I skated at the time, uh, didn't know how to play basketball at all and I started playing on a, on a day when my friend sprained his ankle. I didn't know how to do it at all but I jumped up and gave it a go and I just loved it. I loved it from the moment that I first started playing it. After that summer I continued on to start uh, pretty much playing every day until sundown. Around about 99, I think, uh, when I was playing basketball in, in the park, and I was I was still at my last year of school, and I was thinking about what I wanted to do and who I was as a person, and just growing. and I and I decided that I wanted to to travel and and spend a good amount of time in Asia. So I decided to to pack up and go for for six months nonstop through uh, every country in Asia except for for one, Mongolia. So I pretty much was everywhere and. And, and spend my time eating and, and talking to the local people and learning the arts. Um, it was amazing. It was one of the greatest, greatest experiences. So while I was in Bangkok, I, I looked back at my work and over a two year period, I really assessed, you know, what I wanted to be doing and what really got me up and inspired every day. You know, one day I remember I was, I was reading up on Japanese mythology online and like I was loving like the, the folk tales and like these intricate stories they had. And I, Later that afternoon, I think I was watching like a like a league pass NBA game, and it, it hit me, and I was like, you know, I gotta I gotta tie these stories together of, of uh, these two things. You know, when I started reading about players and their journeys, I instantly like they connected with with uh, the tales and stories of, of Japanese mythology. So I originally sat down and put together two ideas. Uh, one of them was on Japanese mythology, and the other one was was based on. Uh, basketball terminology with the rock, the basketball itself, and, and put together two uh, pieces of work which uh, are my all-time favorites now and eventually influenced people to, to take a look at the work and, and, and uh, appreciate it. Like the love was, was overwhelming and it kind of led to, to projects which I'd never seen before. The first eight artworks that I made um, were a selection of, of players based on what would match well with the Japanese mythology, but also players that were, that were hot at the time. At the time, LeBron was on his way up. The Splash Brothers were just, just getting started, and that was a core artwork that I really wanted to feature. Um, there were so many nice ways to play it. As, you know, water is interpret, interpreted in such a unique, um, lively way, and that, that was one of the first artworks that I worked on. Um, which also accompanied artworks based on, on old players like Sean Kemp, The Rain Man, which, which was a really nice piece that came together. While I was creating the second season of, of Edo Ball, I had about eight artworks again I wanted to make and I really, I thought about the players also who were engaged and, and, and really liked art. From a, from a social media standpoint. Like there were players out there um, who were always involved and engaged with, with their audiences. And I really thought about that and wanted to get it out to good people who would appreciate and see it. So a lot of them um, that I made at that time, like ones for like Dame, Damian Lillard, uh, Carnegie Towns who eventually saw it and tweeted it and bought it after as well. It was just amazing opportunities which really came from the crazy side of social media and the internet in the modern age, you know, it just flew everywhere and it opened doors um, both commercially but also in my mind of, of what I could do with future artworks and also with the series. Uh, 
After I finished the second season and the people were still engaged and loving it, I decided like I had to take it to the next level. I had to think of a way where I could could tie this all together. And I sat down, brainstorming ideas, uh, clothes, doing animations and such. But the one thing I really wanted to do was was bring all the stories into one one larger story and, and narrative. And the way I I chose to do it was with a book. I, I sat down and planned out basically over one night everything I wanted to be in the book. I was obsessed with just wanting to make it happen. So this piece is one of my personal favorites of, of James Harden. The idea came from originally when he went to Houston and his career started growing um, from a seed. You know, I, I took that and put it into the basketball itself. and and imagined and, and compared his career from that point to, to what people would do with grooming uh, bonsai trees, you know, keeping, keeping it intricate, detailed, maintaining the, the tree itself and how much his game has grown since, since he originally left and, and compared to now. So through the journey of, of the series and the, and the book itself has is, is reminded me so much that it's the only thing I want to be doing. Like every day, I want to be creating, you know, art around this area, around Edo Ball, and pushing it, and finding new mediums and areas where I can, I can throw it. And uh, of recent, that's more going into to clothing and um, a lot more storytelling. Like I find that the storytelling is something which has led itself from Edo Ball, but has also landed into commercial projects outside of basketball. Find your passions, find who you are, and, and just be relentless in, in following them and chasing them. You know, everything takes time to work out. I always thought about it in a way like, a, like an NBA player trains, you know. How many times they go to the gym and they put up, you know, a thousand shots every day to get it right. You, you don't see it, you don't know about it, but following a routine and sticking with it has been, has been everything for me and something which I think is pretty important not only to get the work done, but to find enjoyment in the process of getting there.